I'm really excited today because it's a video I've been wanting to make for a while. I'm gonna have you meet San Francisco's most famous resident, Carl LaFog. So let's get on this bike and ride around the city. I'll show you around. It's motion time-lapse day. Woo! There's different devices to shoot motion time lapse. Today we're going to be using the Moza Air 2 gimbal. You could also use a slider as well as those rotating timers. So the benefits with using a gimbal like the Moza Air 2 is that you could pan over a large area. Gimbals also stop in between each photo. So if you're doing a really slow shutter, for instance right now we're doing a two second shutter, it'll stop, take the photo and wait. So then you could capitalize on these long exposure time lapses, which is something some other gimbals don't do. They'll just kind of do a whole motion and not stop in between. That's what I like about the Moza. I love having gear that is multi-purpose. For instance, this gimbal, depending on how you shoot with it, could be your stabilizer, it could be your slider, it could be your motion time lapse, and also your camera battery charger. All in one, so less to carry. It looks like we're having a picnic here and it's a camera gear picnic. So for the things you'll need to get started is obviously a Moza Air 2 gimbal. Then you'll need a camera. I'm gonna be shooting on the Sony a7R 3 This is my main with the 24 to 70 lens. I suggest getting some wide lens if you wanna do a lot of landscapes. You could also time lapse with the 70 to 200 to get some close ups, but I usually use the 24 to 70 and my wide is the Sony 10 to 18. You'll need a tripod possibly for higher shots. I got that Peak Design with me. Control cable that comes with the Moza Air 2. This is the Sony one. A phone, cause you'll need the Moza Master app. And then optional if you wanna do some long exposures, an ND filter. This is the variable Polar Pro Peter McKinnon one. Six to nine stops. And then you'll also need something to do because you're probably gonna be waiting a long time, like a dog, boop, a book, food, drink, a switch, another camera to take some Instagrams. You get the idea. Let's shoot. Once you're at location, I usually like to frame up and get some test frames first. Once you're settled with that, open the Moza Master app, click on the Create Video icon. What I like to start with first is positioning the camera. You have to click on this icon and then click on the second icon that kind of looks like a controller and move the gimbal for your first position. Click Confirm, click on the little plus icon again to set another point and move the gimbal to your second position your shutter time and then the interval time has to be more than the shutter time. So if you have a two second shutter, definitely put three or four interval time. It's nice because they also tell you the photo numbers. Once that is all dialed in, preview it to see the movement and the angles and if you're good to go, press start and make sure nobody touches it. One bump and it's over. When picking locations, one tip is if it's a really touristy area, they might stop in front of your frame to take photos. So move to some place that they probably won't do that. Just know that it might happen. We are back at one of my favorite locations. This is the Palace of Fine Arts. It's very beautiful. So I have my Sony 10 to 18 so I can get a super wide. We're over here in the bushes so I can get some foreground and I'm gonna have the motion kind of go in a diagonal this away. Make sure you put your focus on manual. You do not want it auto-focusing the entire time you're time-lapsing. That would be a big no-no. I also underexposed it by like a stop, a stop and a half because you do not want to blow out the sky, especially when the sky is your subject. It's really easy to bring up shadows, but it's not easy to bring down highlights. So one thing to note, always try to expose for the highlights. And then we wait. So 
we're here at one of my favorite sunset spots. This is in the marina. We have boats, we have the bridge, we got sunset creeping over the mountains over there, and we have this lovely little cute little lighthouse. So because we have a sunset and the exposure and lighting is changing, I kind of want to adjust for that exposure without touching the camera at all. So I'm going to have the camera do all the work. On aperture mode this time, I have it going every two intervals. I know it's sunset and normally you're supposed to do it like every 10 seconds or 15 seconds, but we have a lot of movement in the clouds and the water's moving and the boats are kind of subtly moving and you'll see it. So I wanted to have it a little bit faster than normal on your normal sunset shoot. Now we wait. When shooting sunsets, you could either change the exposure manually since the light will be fluctuating or use aperture priority. Have your ISO as low as possible between like 1 and 400 and your aperture at maybe like an f16. And then your shutter will change automatically based on the exposure. If you're shooting sunsets or the moon and you want to know how to frame up your shot before you set it down and let it go, you could download apps like Sun Locator Light. I know there's better ones out there, but if you have your GPS, it'll tell you exactly where the sun will be moving. Depending on what your subjects are for your time lapse, I like to keep a general rule so I know how to shoot it. For instance, if you're shooting people or cars or fast moving clouds, fog, I like to have a 20 minute duration and a one to five second interval. If you're shooting sunsets, for instance, or shadows moving, have at least 30, 40 minutes to two and a half hours duration and then maybe five to 15 second intervals. And lastly, get creative and have fun. All right, now that we shot everything and we're back home, I'm gonna show you how I go through my editing workflow on this in the simplest way possible. After you dump all the cards and back it up, always back it up, you'll find, depending on what camera you use, that you've gone through a lot of storage as well. For me, I shoot on the A7R 3 with 42 megapixels. I also shot JPEG and RAW just for the sake of this tutorial. But you definitely go through SD cards. So if you're shooting a very long time lapse, God forbid it stops halfway because it's full, I suggest either having dual card slots and have it switch over when it's full on the first card and have 64 gigs for each one. Or if you shoot a lot of time lapse and need to do a two hour session, you probably should go with 128 gigabyte SD cards. This is my folder. I broke it up into locations. So this one's gonna be the lighthouse at sunset. I put my JPEGs in here and I put my RAW in here. I shot both, so they're definitely gonna both be in there. If you shot it in RAW so you could edit it a lot more thoroughly, you're gonna have to go into Lightroom or whatever program you use and color grade and export them into JPEGs. So do that first and then you'll meet us here with your JPEGs folder. What I like to do before I stitch anything is rename them all. Highlight, select, rename. And I'm gonna just title this Lighthouse Time Lapse underscore underscore and then numbers start at one. It's really quick even though there's a thousand photos in here. I do this because in the next step we're gonna have to stitch the JPEGs and run it into a 24 frame movie, export the movie. And sometimes if you go through your cards and you shoot, for instance, 9,999, you know that number is gonna reset to 0001. And if the order is out of whack and you stitch it, it's kinda gonna mess it up. So I just like to do this to just keep it easy and not have to deal with that. So after that's done, another good software is LR Time Lapse. So this is great if you wanna get rid of flickers in your time lapse. Also, if you shoot a lot of sunsets and you wanna gradually work the colors and the exposure, that's really good for that. But we're just gonna keep it simple. And I usually use to stitch QuickTime Player 7. Pretty basic. You can also take all those JPEGs and put them directly into Premiere on a 24 frames per second timeline and then set each duration 
of the photos for one frame. You could highlight all of it and nest it, do some keyframing if you want, but I'm gonna do it this way. So QuickTime Player 7, you go to File, and then you go down to Open Image Sequence. Time Lapse Folder, Lighthouse Sunset, see how easy to find everything. And then you just pick one frame. I just start with the first one and open. And then it'll ask you what's your frame rate. I always check 24 frames per second. You could change it if you'd like. And then push OK. It's gonna <laughs> explode into this huge frame. There it is. I then push Command 3 to bring it down a bit. My monitor's huge, so it's gonna look wonky. Yeah, Command 3 to make it smaller. And then Command E to export it. Put it in an MOV folder, movie folder, and then name it. Depending on how many photos it is, it's gonna take a while. I just kinda let it sit, do its thing, and do something else and come back to it. After the movie file has been exported, bring that into Premiere, whatever editing video program you use, and trim off the ends, cause I know you're probably adjusting or doing test frames, so those are really easy to trim off. I like to fast forward it a little more, maybe speed ramp it depending on what effects I'm doing. Maybe you wanna scale and position and keyframe it, add sound effects. Add it to your vlogs, documentaries, or maybe you just want to export it that way. That's it. Have fun. Go nuts. I'm pretty excited to see what time lapses you guys create, either in your hometowns or on your own adventure. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite things are to time lapse. Thanks for hanging out with me. Find me on IG because I post there on the daily, as well as some time lapses from time to time. You do you, fam, and I'll see you when I see you. Mm, done. You high five? Yeah.